We often have athletes that come to us with the challenge of pre-performance anxiety, and that's probably why you're here too right now, right? That's probably why you clicked on this video. You know what you need to do, you have those capabilities, but you get so anxious that you can't perform, and you lock up, and you start focusing on the past instead of focusing on the present and the future, and you don't really come into the full potential that you need to. Listen, we've been there before. In fact, we have a lot of pro athletes that come to us, even though they're getting paid millions of dollars, even though they've already proven themselves still with this anxiousness. So in today's video, we're gonna help you reach and discover that true potential. We're gonna help you really break through and find how to get to that next level because we're gonna give you the nine expert techniques that we follow with our pro athletes so they can defeat the enemy of performance anxiety. And by the end of this video, you're gonna have the same things that you need so you can do the same. Hey, my name's Matt Calderoni, co-founder of Moletium, where we help athletes discover and reach for true potential by building their resilience. And since 2015, we've helped just over 5,300 athletes from the youth to professional level. And we're on a mission to make sure that every athlete can get the same access to those next level skills so they can break through and be their absolute best. The reason we started this channel is because I used to be a pro athlete. I didn't really get the mental training, if you will, that I needed, or at least the effectiveness of it. And we wanna bring you that in this channel so you can be the best version of yourself. Now, if you have gotten value out of this channel before in the past, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell, share this episode. It helps us continue to build our following so that we can keep bringing you free content and to make sure that you get to your next level as well. Now, with that being said, let's dive into the techniques that are going to help you defeat that enemy of performance anxiety and break through that next level. Number one, you need to understand performance anxiety. What really is it? Oftentimes, we find that athletes don't truly understand it. And as a result of that, they can't really defeat it, right? Think about it for a second. If you know that it's gonna be raining outside, you know exactly what you need to wear. Similarly, if you know about performance anxiety and you know what it entails, you're gonna be able to defeat it. So the first thing you need to understand is why this happens and what it is. To keep it simple, performance anxiety usually comes from fearing something that you experienced in the past or imagining something that maybe didn't happen that could possibly happen in the future that's negative, right? At the end of the day though, it's a fear of some kind of pain that you're worried about, meaning, Maybe you missed a breakaway in the past and you missed the net and so on. And as a result of that, you're now fearing it happening in the future. Or maybe it never really happened in the past, but you know you have a bunch of expectations placed on you and you're scared that you can't deliver. You're fearing that you can't deliver. Regardless of what it is, it's an avoidance of pain. So to defeat this pain, all you really need to do is bring it back to focusing on what you really can control. Because oftentimes, whenever we deal with people who are dealing with anxiety, they're focusing on things they can't really control, right? You can't really control that you missed that breakaway in the past. All you can control now is what you're gonna be doing in the future. You can't really control the fact that everybody's depending on you. What you can control though, is how you work on your skills. So what you need to do and what you need to understand about this performance anxiety, you need to always turn it into something you can control, which is always going to be working on skills. The first thing you need to do is ask yourself, what skills can I work on right now to help me get rid of this anxiety? So if you're worried about, let's say, performing in your upcoming game, ask yourself, what do I need to be sure of when I'm going into my game so that I can perform? Go solve for that. We put a whole thing together. We'll link the video here here on how we work through that, what things we give our athletes to make sure they're working through it. Click it if you want to find out more. But to keep it simple, all this is is about understanding what result you want and bringing it back to the things you can control. So if you want to make sure that you are, you know, being good against a player who might be stronger than you and you're playing defense, understand what skills go into defeating a player who's bigger and stronger than you. You can totally do that. If you are a goalie and you're worried about, you know, playing against a really good team, Gotta ask yourself, what situations do I need to prepare for? Go work on those. It's gonna help drastically with the anxiousness and that's how this thing works. It's fearing past pain and you defeat it by working on the present situation where you can work on a skill. Number two, use visualization or mental imagery regularly. At Moletium, we call this mental repetitions because it's exactly that, right? You're doing repetitions, but mentally. But what this allows you to do is actually build your certainty. Now think about this for a second. When you're anxious, you're uncertain about something, right? You're uncertain about the future because maybe you experienced something in the past or whatever. What this does though is it allows you to build certainty even if you've never gotten the results before. I want you to ditch this whole thing about confidence because the truth is confidence comes after you get the results. And if you didn't get the results in the past, you haven't got it yet in the present and you're worried about getting it in the future, depending on confidence really isn't the best thing that you can do. You can not depend on certainty though. Certainty is self-belief in the skills that you possess. I want you to understand this. If you're worried about getting a result, you don't need to worry about anything more other than being sure of your skills. So. 
imagining things mentally, rehearsing it with enough emotional repetition and intensity, I'm telling you right now, is going to bring you that certainty you need. We do this all the time with our pro athletes. We work it in at least four times a week. All you need to do is build certainty behind a skill. So that thing we just discovered in number one, where I told you focus on what you can control, which is building skills, ask yourself about that skill. Okay, exactly how do I need to use it? and then visualize yourself doing it. You wanna visualize yourself for three sets of 10 repetitions. Now, so that I don't repeat myself, because I've said this in multiple past videos, you can click the link here somewhere on the screen that will take you to it. But we teach you exactly how to properly visualize so that you can get rid of this anxiousness and really work through it. But you need to make sure you're working in mental imagery or mental repetitions at least four times a week so that you can build that certainty and walk in sure of yourself. Next, develop a pre-performance system. So this is what most people know as a, a pre-competition routine or whatever you wanna call it. But the thing is they use the word routine. The only problem we have here at Moleteum with routines is that oftentimes there's timing associated with it, right? So it's like, I've got to do this thing at this time and this thing at that time and this thing at that time and this thing at that time. What we find is though with that and the problem, sometimes that causes anxiousness in itself, right? We've had so many times in the past, and which is why we adopted into systems instead of routines, but where so many athletes are focused on making sure these things happen in this order, when the truth is, all a pre-performance system does is put you into a state of certainty or what we like to call a state of resilience before a game. So when you can put yourself into this state of feeling good, it means that you're doing certain things to get you there, right? And to get there, usually it's something like where you wanna make sure you're doing a visualization, you're doing some kind of deep breathing, let's say, maybe you're doing some kind of film watching, but regardless, you need to identify those things that make you feel good before a competition. And I'm gonna keep it as simple as this. Just make sure to do them 20 minutes before you leave. Use it as a list, okay? Don't really look at it as like, it has to happen in this order. Instead, it's like, hey, these are the things that make me feel good before a game. Usually there's about five of them. Do those things before you leave. Keep it that simple and I promise you, it will take you into the spot that you need to be to decrease that anxiousness. So a realistic target is simply this. It's something you can actually accomplish, which means, in simple terms, you need to focus on things you can control, which means in performance, you need to be more obsessed over taking actions and you need to be getting results. Oftentimes what we find is that our top goal scorers that we work with or our top point getters, regardless of what it is, they are obsessed over the actions that get them points. They don't worry about the points in the game. It's kind of like, they often they say like, if I'm worried about points, I'm capping myself. There's an NBA player we work with who said, Matt, I'm not gonna focus on 25 a game or whatever it might be. Instead, I'm just gonna focus on consistently using my three ball. I said, why is that? He goes, because if I hit 25, what do I do? Do I stop, right? It's like, no, you don't. It's, it's very true. And at the same time, it's like, if I'm short of it, do I stop? No, you keep going. I need you to obsess over realistic targets, which are always going to be focusing on actions, not results. So what you wanna do is you wanna work backwards. You wanna take this to say, okay, if I wanna score in a game, that's the end result, great. You can't control it. What you can control though, is getting to the net and shooting to score. Those are controllable actions. You need to be doing them consistently and that should be your target for the game. That's all we're doing when it comes to our top goal scorers. We're just having them obsess over repetitively doing those actions that drive them results and forgetting about everything else. Number five, you can use positive self-talk and affirmations. Here's how simple this is. The story you tell yourself is often the one that comes true. Here's why. When you say something to yourself repetitively, you're tapping into a part of your mind called the subconscious mind. You're directly speaking to that. Your subconscious mind is much more powerful than your conscious mind. Your subconscious mind is what's responsible for making sure that your body's constantly going through its rhythm, making sure you're breathing right now without you having to think about it. It's making sure that you're digesting things without you having to think about it, your blood's flowing, so on and so forth. In our subconscious mind, what's held though are beliefs about ourselves. If the self-talk you have during a competition is something that's negative, is something that's constantly saying, I should be worrying about this, am I okay, am I prepared? And those are the things that you're asking yourself, it's really not gonna go well for you. That's just the reality of it. So what you need to do is instead, find a question that you can use that will constantly reaffirm what you're doing in the right way, or you can use a phrase. So what we do with a couple of our players, we'll find a question that allows them to go right to a source of power. One of the main questions we use is what's the solution? In all scenarios, you can apply that, right? If you just did something well and you ask yourself, what's the solution here? The solution is gonna be do the same thing. If you didn't get the result you wanted or you didn't you know, follow through the way you wanted, you ask yourself, what's the solution? It's gonna directly guide your focus onto the solution, not the problem. If you wanna use a phrase instead, you can totally do that as well. It can be something like, I've got this, I'm so ready, I'm prepared, but 
just understand what this is really doing. It's not something where it's like, you know, you're just gonna say these and all of a sudden it's gonna snap. You're tuning your subconscious mind. That's the key to this. So if you're gonna use this positive self-talk and affirmations, you need to understand it's repetitively speaking to that subconscious part of your brain. Number six, you can seek professional support. This is something where I will totally recommend our programs for this. We are often helping athletes through pre-performance anxieties. It's a normal thing. It's a common thing. Heck, it's why some of the world's best professional athletes constantly have coaches on the mental side surrounding them for this, right? The great Cristiano Ronaldo talks about how he has had multiple psychologists for multiple different things, for multiple aspects of his performance. Now that's a little excessive, but what I'll say is this, seeking professional support for this is something that you can utilize to make sure you're constantly there. I say this all the time, but you're often taught as an athlete how to physically perform the way you need to, but nobody teaches you how to mentally perform the way you need to, right? Nobody teaches you the high performance mindset side. You need that. So links are down below if you want to apply to work with us, or you can also work through one of our other programs like the Pocket Coach. It's all there, but a great thing you can do for pre-performance anxiety is work with a professional on it. Number seven, focus on the present moment. It's this simple. Our highest performing individuals and athletes, which eventually become all of them, I'm telling you right now, are focused on the now. So what does that mean? It means they're focused rep by rep, not game by game or anything else other than that. They're focused on the one thing in front of them and they do it well. And when they don't do it well, they just adapt and do it better on the next one. It's that simple. You don't need to worry about anything else. I'm telling you right now, professional sports, sports at any level, doesn't matter what age, it's an 80-20 game. 80% of the time it's gonna go your way, 20% it's not. That's what you're signing up for and there's nothing wrong with that. But you need to realize you need to stay present in the moment. That means a rep by rep focus where you're just focused on the actions that drive results like I said in one of the past techniques. Number eight, you need to prepare yourself physically and emotionally. All that means is that you're taking the time to actually work through the skills physically that you're visualizing. All we do with our pro athletes is get them to take what they're visualizing and actually practice it in person in real life, right? We get them to do it for five minutes each. They work on each skill. It's a total of 15 minutes of extra work and it allows them to feel good physically going into games. Physical prep also means that your muscles, your joints, your tendons, everything, your body is feeling good. When you're going into a game and you know that your body isn't fully there and that you're kind of working with a nagging injury or whatever it might be, that often gets you to feel a little more anxious than you want to. You don't need that, so make sure your physical prep is on. Emotional prep, that means you need to make sure you're going into games clear-headed. You need to go into performances with that. A great way to do this, we call it all the time and we program for this in our programs, is an alter ego. An alter ego allows you to say, hey, right now, that personal life stuff, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna unpack it when I get home. Right now, I need to be focused on A, B, and C because that's all I can control right now. Listen, you can't worry about the things that you're dealing with at home in performance because you can't control them there. You can't do anything to impact them there. So for emotional preparedness, you need to make sure you're compartmentalizing your thoughts, you're focusing on what you need to, and then when you're gone and you're out and you're done from sport, you can work with a pro to help you with those emotional sides of it, or you can just work through it on your own, either or works. And last but not least, embrace the competitive environment. Listen. It is an absolute honor and pleasure to be able to play and perform at competitive levels. You also need to understand though that you're committing to that reality of that process. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay to be in a competitive environment, but you need to realize competitive environments, all they require is people who are sure of themselves. That's it, right? If you're just constantly working on your certainty, like I talked about in the past techniques, you're gonna be okay. We say this all the time, but a lot of times people look at our athletes and they ask a question to them, how do you maintain yourself? How do you stay so focused? How do you stay so sure of yourself when you're performing out there and there's thousands, if not millions of eyes on you? And they say, it's because I'm prepared. That's the truth in all of this. There's no better cure, quote unquote, for this than preparing yourself so that you walk into it knowing you get the results. Because the thing is this, you might start off being a little anxious. It's normal for everybody. I feel like a lot of times people, you know, try to make it out as if to be that no athlete ever gets anxious. The truth is there's a little bit of anxiousness there until you start getting the results. Once you get the results, they go away. But if you apply any of these nine techniques, I highly suggest applying all of them. Just go through this like a checklist and see what you're already not doing. It's gonna help you so much, I promise. So if you got some value from this video, which I'm sure you did, please, like, subscribe, click the notification bell, share it. We can keep bringing you free content because of that. Also, comment down below, did we miss something? Is there something there that you do that you know other people would benefit from? That's what being a difference maker is. That's what we do on this channel. Make sure to comment that down below. If you wanna work with one of our coaches or work with through one of our programs, there's a free consultation call you can have with us. It's linked down below, it's an application for it. Or you can work through our pocket coach. It's also there too. 
and you'll get the same value. Other than that, you've got the nine expert techniques now that you need to defeat that enemy of performance anxiety. If you'd like more videos, you can click the ones that are linked here and make sure to stay resilient. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the full podcast episode, click right here.